Hello everyone, it's me, Sanjay Masu, back again for another video. This time, I'll be continuing the Cambridge Primary Sample Test for Mathematics Paper 2, Stage 5. This is part 2 of the series, which I'll cover questions 14 to 29. Let's start. Question 14. Here's a number line. It shows decimals and fractions. Write the correct number in each box. So 0 0.4 goes to what? Of course, it's simply 4 by 10, or in other words, 2 by 5. Now, 3 by 4 goes to what? There's a second blank. Well, we can see that 3 by 4, even using our calculator, is simply 0 0.75. So that'll be our answer. Question 15. 10 hens lay 365 eggs. 26 are broken. 10 packs the rest of the eggs into a box of 6. How many boxes can 10 completely fill? That's simply 365 minus 26, which is the number of eggs which he will finally get after the broken ones are removed and divide by 6 and that's simply 339 by 6 and doing it we get 56.5 and in this case the number of boxes that Chen completely fills are 56 boxes that's our answer question 16 write one digit in each box to make this correct Dash 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 times dash equals 1745. Well, we consider 1745, since it ends with a 5, is definitely divisible by 5. So, we can write a 5 here, and then actually do the division, which, let's get our calculator out. There we go. 1745 divided by 5 to get 349. So, we can write that over there. That'll be our answer. Let's go to question 17. Oliver says, I think more people in my class like apples than pears. Oliver collects some data to find out. Take all the information Oliver must collect to find out if it's correct. The number of people in his class are like apples. But he must collect this because he needs to know how many like both apples and pears. And speaking of liking pears, the second option which he needs to know is this one here because that's the number of people in his class who like pairs. And these are the only two options which you need actually, because the names of the people in his class are not really required, because he does not really need to know them if he wants to find out how many like apples or pears. He can just use a tally chart for apples and pears and find it that way. The number of people in his school who like pears. Well, this is a trick idea, because you need to know only those in his class. If he knows how much is in his school you like pears, it's not really a huge difference. Now, the number of people who like oranges in his class, it's not really relevant to the question which he has, so it's not required. So these two are the options. Question 18. Look at the set of numbers. Complete the statements. The numbers in the set are all divisible by one, dash, and dash. Well, we can see that all of these numbers actually are divisible by five, right? since they all end with a 0 or a 5. So we can write 5, and there's actually one more, because if we look here, we can see that this is 625, 5 to the power of 4. All the numbers have to be divisible by power of 5. And in this case, it's actually 25. Since if we divide all of these by 25, you'll get 6, you'll get a 25, you'll get a 16, you'll get a 7, and you'll get a 9. These are all whole numbers, so they're divisible. The numbers in the set that are divisible by 50 are dash. Well, you have to write down all the numbers which are divisible by 50, which is 150 and 400. This is because they end with a 0, and the second digit is either a 5 or a 0. Only then it's divisible by 50. It has to be divisible by both 5 and 10. And this 5... Yes, the second digit has to be divisible by 5. The first digit has to be a 0 or divisible by 10. That's our answer. Question 19. Here's a set of digit cards. Hassan puts them in a bag and picks one card. Take the statement that is least likely. Hassan picks an odd number. Well, we can see that there are 10 numbers and out of these, 5 are odd. So the probability is 5 by 10. Hassan picks a number less than 5. Once again, it's 5 by 10, since there are 5 numbers which are less than 5 here. 0, 1, 2, 3, 4. Hassan picks number 9. There's only one number 9 here, so it's 1 by 10. And Hassan picks a number between 4 and 7. This could simply be 5 and 6, so it's 2 by 10. Now, the least probability is going to be the third one. 1 by 10 is less than the rest. That's our answer. 
Question 20. Here's part of a sequence on a number line. The sequence increases by the same number each time. Write the correct number in the box. So if the sequence increases by a certain number four times, you can see that the four hours, so four times, we'll get to 78. So that means, let's say this number is n. So 46 plus the number n times 4, because we're adding it four times, plus n plus n plus n plus n, which is 4n. So 46 plus 4n is equal to 78. 4n is equal to 78 minus 46, and doing that, it's 32. So therefore, n is equal to 8, and the number over here is going to be 46 plus 8, which is 54. Question 21. Here's some dots on two grids of squares. Join dots to make a different isosceles triangle on each grid. So let's start with the most obvious one. We can just join two lines from the same point like this and draw a third line over there. These isosceles because these two sides are equal and these two angles are equal. You could even draw this. It's the same triangle but just scaled up by two. Now the second one, you can't draw this one over here, the scaled up by two because it's technically the same isosceles triangle but then it's just in a different size. They have said to make different isosceles triangles, so the second option must be something like this. Over here. And yes, it could obviously be like this, or like this, or like this. And even over here, it could be one of these as well. But you have to make sure that you draw it within the dots over here. That'll be our answer. Let's go to question 22. Here's some information about rainfall in the town. A. In how many months was the actual rainfall greater than the expected rainfall? So the expected rainfall and actual rainfall are given in two separate bar graphs like this. Now for January, expected is higher than actual rainfall, so that does not count. February, the actual is greater, so that's 1. And then for March, the actual is slightly greater than it's expected, so that's 2. April, the expected is a bit, a tiny bit higher than the actual, so that does not count. In May, this is clearly higher, so that's 3. And June, this is also just a bit higher, so that's 4. And that's going to be 4 months. B, in which month was the actual rainfall closest to the expected rainfall? As I said before, we can see that April has the closest gap. This one looks like about 3.8 or 3.9 or so in centimeters. And the expected rainfall is 4 centimeters, which is extremely close. Therefore, the answer is April. Also, if you look at the other months and their bar graphs over here, and if you take the difference, it'll be nowhere close to the difference for the April one. So this is the closest to expected rainfall. That's our answer. Question 23. Three identical boxes balanced with two identical cans. Each item has a mass between 300 and 500 grams. A. Write possible masses for the boxes and cans. Alright, so let's name the box as B. That means it's 3B on one side. And the cans are C. That means we have 2C on the other side. So 3B is equal to 2C. How do I know it's equal to? Because the weighing balance is balanced. It, it shows that it's equal on both sides. So that means B is equal to 2 by 3C. So B is definitely smaller than C because 2 by 3 is less than 1. And we're multiplying that. So that means B has to be quite close to 300. Otherwise, how would C be less than 500? So let's just say B is actually 300, right? The closest to 300 is obviously the number itself. So if B is equal to 300, that means C is going to be equal to 3 by 2 of B. If you rearrange it this way. So C is simply going to be 300 divided by 2 times 3, which is 450. And this works, right? So 300, 450. B, write different possible masses for the boxes and cans. So now, instead of going 300, we'll go a little bit above 300. Let's say 310. So let's just write that. Now, if we go for the can, we have to multiply by 3 by 2 once again. So that's simply going to be cancelling it out a bit, 155 here, and multiplying that by 3, we get 465, which is less than 500. And of course, it's greater than 300. So we can write 465 here, and that's the answer. There are, of course, multiple answers. You could write 
this is 305, 302. Actually, there's many which you could choose from. I've just written two of them. Let's go to question 24. Question 24. Here's some information about how children travel to school. We have plots A, B, C, and D. All for the same information. A, B, C, and D. A. Which two shots show the same information? Let's look here. Well, we can see that in A, how children travel and the number of children, the bus is 7, walk is 9, car is 8, bicycle is 6, other is 1. Now for B, we can see this 7, 9, 8, 5, 1. So this is not the same. There's a 5 and 6, which are different. Now as for C, other is definitely 1, since it's between 2 and 0. This is 6, this is 8, this is 9, this is 7. We can see that these two are the same here. It's just written in the opposite direction. So bus 7, correct. Walk 9, correct. Car 8, correct. Bicycle 6, correct. And other 1, correct. Also, if you thought D might be, well, it's wrong because bus is 5 here and everything else is the same. But bus is 5 making it different. So A and C are the same. We can write that. A and C. B, Anastasia draws this graph to show the information in the tally chart. Mia says, you should not connect the dots with lines. Explain why Mia is correct. Alright, why should we not connect the dots with lines? Well, we can see that this is discrete data. And discrete data means any data which is given to specific values like bus or walk. And it does not have infinite values which it could be. For example, if you have an x comma y graph like this, this is continuous data because let's say let's say there's two and three, then you can have even two point one, two point two. This can take any value, but discrete data does not take any value. The number of children also cannot be anything other than a whole number. It can be a zero and any number like one, two, three, four, but it cannot be three point five, for example. So you should not connect the dots with lines. She's correct because this data is discrete. And as an explanation, you can write there is no category in between the dots. Or in other words, in between these categories here, there's nothing in here, which means it can take only specific values for the data. That's why it's discrete and that's our answer. These lines literally mean nothing. Question 25. Rajiva showed some 3D shapes on this Venn diagram. Has at least one triangular face and there's another label which is missing, which we have to complete in part A. Well, we can see that all of these shapes have a shape at the front, which is the cross section, and it has a length over here for pretty much all five. And this one has at least one triangular face, unlike the rest. But these are all classified under prisms, since they have a cross section and a length, which is the stretch of the cross section across the whole object. So, prisms. That's our answer. B, write the name of a shape that can go in the empty part of the Venn diagram. That's going to be this one. And the name can be, for example, a tetrahedron. That's simply a triangular-based pyramid. You could write triangular-based pyramid, and that's also correct. Or you could just write a square-based pyramid as well. That's also right. Or even if you write a normal pyramid, it can never be a prism. So obviously, that's going to be correct. Question 26, Pierre has five number cards. The medium of the numbers is six, the mode is three. Write the missing numbers on the cards. All right, so if the mode of the numbers is three, there has to be at least two cards with the number of three. We already have that one of the cards is seven. And if the median is six, that means there has to be a value of six in here because there are five number cards. So the median value will be the third one in ascending order. And in this case, Let's take these in ascending order. 3, 3, 6, 7. That means we need one more number over here which is larger than everything else to make 6 the median. 
it can be any number which is greater than 7. For example, 8 or 9, 10. It can be anything like that. The only thing is, don't write a 7 here. Because if you write a 7, that means there are two 7s and there are two 3s. Therefore, the mode will no longer be 3. There will be no mode because there's more than one which has the same frequency. Therefore, any integer which is greater than 7, strictly greater than it cannot be equal to, will do it. That's our answer. Question 27. One coil of the shared tile is shaded. UV joins three tiles to make a rectangle. What percentage is shaded? Well, we can see that there's one fourth shaded here, another one fourth shaded here, that's a one fourth shaded here. So you have one fourth plus one fourth plus one fourth. But this is over three separate squares. So we have to divide by three. At the end, this becomes three by four divided by three, which is still one fourth, right? is still a quarter shaded in the whole shape. So the percentage of the rectangular shade will be 25%. That's our answer. Question 28. These clocks show the time in different parts of the world when it's 7.45 in London. That's shown by this clock. And Tokyo, it's 4.45 p.m. Auckland, 8.45 p.m. What time is it in Tokyo if it's midnight in Auckland? From this picture over here, we can see that Auckland is 2045 minus 1645, which is equal to four hours ahead of Tokyo. So when it's midnight in Auckland, that's simply 0000. zero, zero, zero. So we subtract four hours because Auckland is four hours ahead, so Tokyo is four hours behind. Subtracting four hours, we get eight o'clock the previous day because we can write 0000, zero, zero, zero as 24 o'clock technically and if we subtract 4 we get 20 so the time is going to be 8 o'clock we can just write this minus 4 o'clock that's simply 24 minus 4 which is equal to 20 that's 8 o'clock p.m. that's our answer question 29 four people on a 40 kilometer race they each record their times. Jamila runs the race in the shortest time. Mike runs in 270 minutes. Carlos runs each kilometer in 7 minutes. Gabriela runs the race in 30 seconds less than 5 hours. Write the names next to the correct time in the table. First, we know that Jamila runs the shortest time. Which is the shortest time out of these? Well, we can see that this is extremely close to 5 hours, which is 300 minutes. So this is the longest time, not the shortest. This one here and this one here are both greater than or equal to 4.5 hours. This is equal to, this is greater than. This is less than 4.5 hours, so this is the shortest, and Jamila runs in that time. Now, as for Mike, he runs in 270 minutes. If we divide by 60, we'll get 4.5, and this is the time in hours. So, the first one over here is Mike. Carlos runs each kilometer in seven minutes. So it's a 40 kilometer race, he runs each in 7 minutes. 7 times 40 is 280 minutes. And that's simply going to be 4 hours and 40 minutes. And that'll be over here. And using this information, we know that Gabriella runs the last one. But of course, this is clearly 30 seconds or half a minute less than 5 hours. So if we take 5 hours, 300 minutes minus 0 0.5 half a minute is 30 seconds we get 299.5 which is correct for gabriella so that's our answer with that i come to the end of the video please like this video subscribe to our channel share this video with your friends and family and comment on how you think this video was with that it's me sanjay vasu signing out thank you bye